It was in 1909 when an Asquith-led Liberal government with Lloyd George as Chancellor attempted to pass what was called the People's Budget, new taxes that targeted wealthy landowners to fund welfare reforms. It was the first budget that explicitly intended to redistribute wealth. The lower rate of tax was to increase to 3.75% and the higher rate to 5%. What glory days! The House of Lords, being full of wealthy landowners, naturally objected to it and took an entire year and two general elections for the Commons to overrule the Lords, with the consequence being the Parliament Act of 1911. Now, whilst the Lords may have been on the right side of history in the matter of not raising taxes, it was on the wrong side of peers against the people, and it's not on the right side of history today. And it should remember what happened in 1911. Today, the Commons voted on the 20 amendments made to the government's illegal migration bill. And other than some minor concessions to Conservative backbenchers, the Commons has bounced back the Lords' amendments with big majorities. Fundamentally, the function of the House of Lords is one of detail and process. When legislation passes through to the upper chamber, its primary role is to ensure that the legislation is properly written. That is to say that it's a statutory instrument that has an affirmative rather than a negative process, the details of legislation, not the policy. The policy is for the Democratic House. But the Lord's amendments to the Illegal Migration Bill are of a substantial political nature rather than ones of constitutional propriety. And by acting in this way, it's pushing the boundaries of conventions. And bear in mind, we don't have a codified constitution. We have one based on conventions. And this is part of a Broad attempt, a trend from the upper house. We've discussed it on the programme before. The Lords seem to have a problem with the Conservatives, especially since Brexit. Since 2016, the government has lost more than half of its votes in the House of Lords, 350 defeats in six years. In the preceding six years, the number was 160. So it's more than doubled. And a lot of that was around Brexit and now on migration an issue where the elected chamber has considerable public support and wherefore the Lords should be especially careful. The Salisbury Convention, strictly the Salisbury-Addison Convention, indicates that the House of Lords should not oppose manifesto policies. Well, the Conservative Manifesto of 2019 states that we intend to take control of immigration and this obstruction by the Lords is in opposition to a clear democratic mandate. And it's also something that is urgent because people are arriving illegally by boat every day and it's costing you, the taxpayer, millions and into the billions of pounds. Half a million pounds a day just to reserve spaces in hotels. Three billion pounds a year annual cost. More than 13,000 people have crossed the channel already this year. But ultimately, the people always win in battles with the peers and the Lords must remember that the Parliament Act of 1911 explicitly states its intention to substitute for the House of Lords, as it presently exists, a second chamber constituted on a popular instead of an hereditary basis. The sort of Damocles has dangled over the unelected upper chamber for 112 years, but how long will the horsehair hold? As always, I want to know what you think, mailmog at gbnews.com. 